it's been a, it's been a long time. Actually, it's been a few weeks. Long time, few weeks, whatever it is. It's been a minute. But <clears throat> I'm here with you now. And thank you all for listening whenever you're choosing to listen and however you all choose to consume this, whenever you all choose to consume this, all of that good stuff. Send me an email, michael at datingwhileadulting.com. Or you can send Reggie, yes, that Reggie, an email at Redenbush, R E D E N, Bush at datingwhileadulting.com. You can also reach the show, both of us, at um, podcast at datingwhileadulting.com. And I think it's podcast, but just, just email me, michael at datingwhileadulting.com. You know, Reggie's not going to check his email. And I don't even know that I have the show email right. I should correct that though. Anyway, let's need to hear there. Matter of fact, I just can't let this pass. Nah, I'll do it later and let you all know what the what the show is for the email address, what the email address is for the show. But my email address again is Michael at datingwhileadulting.com. And I've spent way too much time talking about email. So let me get into what I want to talk about. And <clears throat> again, as always, say tell 50 friends to tell 50 friends. I appreciate you for it if you do it. And if you don't, I appreciate you for coming along. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, I was on a road trip with a friend of mine. And, you know, when you go on a road trip with someone, you talk about a whole bunch of stuff. It's like, hey, you're in the car, listen to the radio, listen to some music or whatever it is. And you just talk about stuff that you, you know, whatever. And among many of the topics that we discussed on this road trip, we talked about therapy and we talked about forgiveness. Specifically, uh, my friend was talking about how his therapist had worked with him about being more forgiving, which isn't the worst thing in the world. It's not bad at all. First of all, it is nice to be able to have conversations with other men about therapy. It speaks to a growth, um, a maturity that we as men are like finally embracing, at least in that area. Me and Reggie, yeah, again, that Reggie. We used to talk about therapy on this very podcast all the time. And he used to talk about his multiple therapists. Now he's only down to one. But he would talk about his therapist and I'd talk about my experiences with therapy. I, let me just say this. It seems like anybody can be a therapist nowadays. It seems like it doesn't take a lot to, to call yourself some type of therapist or life coach or something like that. And from my most recent efforts to find therapy via some social sites that I won't name because I don't want to get anybody in trouble, including myself. But boy, I tell you what, all money spent is not good money. But with all of that said, but going back to therapy and men and all of that stuff, um, as you know, therapy amongst men is something that is way um, under discussed because men don't like to talk about therapy. Men don't go to therapy. Um, and it's a sin for men to even need therapy. But fortunately, more and more men are breaking out of that mode and accepting the fact that, hey, we got some fucked up shit that we need to deal with. So it's good that we're dealing with our stuff. Um, yeah. yeah. And it's funny that a lot of the people that talk about therapy as if it's a sin are those very people that actually need therapy. But again, it was refresh, refreshing to have conversations like that amongst men on our little road trip. Anyway, like I do, I started thinking about this through the prism of dating. And while forgiveness in general, not therapy, but forgiveness, and while forgiveness in general is a good thing, I think that forgiveness in dating isn't always the best thing. And I, I guess it all depends on what you're forgiving and while you're forgiving the person in question and why you're forgiving the person in question. Um, people make mistakes and people do regrettable things. We all do. I mean, shoot, we're talking about people, we all do. Um, but one thing that's interesting to me is the reason or are the reasons that one forgives in dating versus some other areas, for example, like if someone that you read, someone that you don't know really well does something to you, why do you choose to forgive them? Or a stranger, why would you forgive them? What fact is going to forgiving that person, that stranger, or that person that you barely, barely know? 
which is basically a stranger, usually it comes down to your relationship with God or something that you're trying to accomplish within yourself. Regarding the relationship with God, um, the Bible was filled with text about forgiving. And while I'm not um, as familiar with other doctrine, I feel comfortable saying that forgiveness is one of the pillars of pretty much all religions. Matter of fact, pretty much, I would say all religions, unless you're some kind of devil worshiper or something like that, and then you probably wouldn't be encouraged to forgive. But that's a road that I don't wanna go down because ew, that's kind of creepy. Um, I was about to say shout out to the devil worshipers, but no, you don't deserve a shout out. Anyway, so while religions don't always agree on many things, um, the fact that they agree on forgiveness in some form or fashion must mean that God approves of it. I think that's pretty safe to say. Um, it's not like I'm stepping out on a ledge here or something like that. So one of the one of the primary thought processes when it comes to forgiving people outside of dating is that you don't want to be on the wrong side of God and forget the devil worshipers, but for you non-believers out there, your primary thought in choosing to forgive someone might be that by forgiving the person that has aggrieved you, um, it releases a weight, you know, off your shoulders that you might be carrying. Because if you have animosity towards someone, that is like carrying a weight. It really is. Um, I have, I've never hated anybody, but I've had people that I've had dislike for. And when you're holding that stuff in, it just kind of like bubbles up on, on you. It kind of feeds, it feeds on you and stuff like that. It's not good. It's not good for your soul. Everybody should be working to forgive regardless of what the situation is. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And some people, some people are just good at carrying that weight. They're so good at carrying that weight of not liking somebody that, that they don't even really realize that they're carrying a weight. <clears throat> some people just like, um, having bad feelings towards someone or hating someone or not forgiving someone they just they just kind of enjoy that they feed off of it they say it motivates them or some bs like that whatever works man but hmm, i don't know i i think those people that believe that though they don't realize how much better they would feel if they just forgave the person that did them wrong or the person that they perceived did them wrong. Because oftentimes we're like talking about people doing us wrong and they really didn't do us wrong. It's either a misunderstanding or something like that. But instead they like living in anger toward another person or a group of people or something like that. So it is what it is, but that's their cross to bear. That's something that they have to deal with. Um, so, you know, but forgiving people is freeing, you know? like zen you know we are the world you know all that good stuff anyway when when choosing to forgive a person in dating or forgive people in dating maybe your relationship with god is a factor could be or the sense of freedom you know that zen but in relationships it's more than that in relationships things like the time invested into the relationship is a factor in, in as into why you might forgive that person I guess there's nothing wrong with that. I guess it all depends on, again, on what you get forgiven them for. I don't know. So, someone that you've known for years should get more benefit of the doubt than someone that you just met. Or should they? I don't know. Some people will forgive strangers more quickly than they'll forgive someone that they've dated for years. But maybe that's not the worst thing. Maybe that's not the worst thing in the world, at least sometimes. And that's the problem with some of these relationships. And that's the problem with dating a lot of the time. You know, people are too forgiving in relationships in a lot of these relationships these days. That's a problem. Too forgiving in dating. And as a result, it leads to problems in that relationship and in future relationships. As a matter of fact, when I meet women, and sorry to send you out, ladies, but you know, it is what it is. But when, I'm, when I talk to women, one of the things that seems to be consistent amongst them and women listening to this, you can ask yourself this question because it is something that I have not found in a lot of men that I have conversations with, or at least the guys won't admit to this if they have done it. But women that I talk to, they can tell stories about guys they've given tons of extra chances to. Guys, as they say, have done them wrong, but they just keep giving them chances, keep forgiving them, keep forgiving them, keep forgiving them. And while it's good to forgive them and all of that stuff, um, 
I don't know that you should keep forgiving them while you're still there with them. But that's a whole different thing. I'll talk about that in a second, you know? Yeah, but guys that they're dating, guys that they're in relationships with, guys that have done them wrong in some kind of way, they've forgiven these guys over and over again. And again, when I talk to guys about this, about forgiving women that have done them dirty over and over again, guys don't give women as many chances. And while there might be some women that say, hey, I cheated on my man 15 times and he forgave me every time. And I don't know why I just go to cheating, but whatever it is that he's, he's done or she's done that you're forgiving them for. Yeah, it just doesn't seem like guys give women as many chances as women give men. Yeah. And again, I just watched this multiple times. Sometimes it's for the same thing. Sometimes it's for a bunch of different things. Either way, there's a whole lot of forgiveness is being given. And why is that? There's nothing wrong with forgiving, like I said a little bit earlier. Nothing wrong with forgiving somebody multiple times. But there is a problem with putting yourself in a position to be forgiven over and over and over again. Like, if you keep getting shot, and I understand in this environment that we're all living in and today, especially in America, using an analogy that involves someone being shot, isn't the most sensitive way to go. But if you're in the way of a car, let's say, and the car just keeps running over you more and more again, see how I'm moving away from the shooting thing, but the car just keeps running over you over and over again, eventually, you probably should get your butt to the sidewalk and get out of the street. Just a suggestion from me to you. Now, you can forgive the person that, run, that ran you over, but you shouldn't keep putting yourself in position to get run over over and over again. But that's what a lot of these women do. And again, not meaning to single out the women, but I don't hear guys talk about giving women all of the chances that women give men. And so... Yeah, just a little advice. Maybe you should get, maybe you should move out of the way. You can forgive them, but move out of the way. And then you'll find that once you move out of the way, there won't be as many reasons to forgive the person because you would have moved out of the way or in the case of a relationship, you might have moved on. But when someone usually, when someone usually is <clears throat> forgives the other person multiple times, it's usually not because of God or any type of religious view or godly view, spiritual view that you might have. And it's usually not because of some Zen inner peace stuff either. Way too many times, it's because you don't want to let that other person go. I think, I, honestly, I think that's where all of this, um, where it, you, they say, I forgive, but I don't forget. That's probably where that came from because those people that say that stuff in relationships, you have to question if they really forgave because if if you claim to forgive somebody but you keep throwing it in their face or holding it against them or making them pay a penance over and over again have you really forgotten can you really forgive somebody if you don't forget i mean can you forgive somebody yeah if you don't forget well i guess you yeah you can forgive somebody if you don't forget but I don't know if you've forgiven someone that you still hold it when you still hold it against them. And I guess that's the problem. But for those people that talk about the forgiving and forgetting and stuff like that, at least they're being honest about the not forgetting part because, yeah, a lot of people don't forget stuff that's done to them. But with that said, you keep giving them more and more chances. So if you're giving them more and more chances, you may as well forget. If you don't forgive them five times, you may as well forget the next four. I don't know. Yeah. And eventually what happens is you either get fed up with them and having to forgive them, or eventually they get fed up with uh, chasing forgiveness and they move on. And then that leaves a person really bitter. And then that residual bitter, bitterness, it carries over into the next relationship. And it's a never ending cycle. And while one way to break the cycle is for those um, that need to be forgiven to stop 
the one way to break the cycle is for those that need to be forgiven is to stop for those to stop doing the stuff that needs to be forgiven you know we're all adults here especially the demographic that listens to this um this podcast and you know it's not you know a lot of the things that we do that we need forgiveness for we know better a lot of the things that we do that we need forgiveness for aren't done out of ignorance we know better but either we think we can get away with it either we don't care about um why we're doing it either we don't think about why we're doing it is something (laughs) is something but either way, the easiest way to break the cycle is not to do the stuff that we need to constantly be asking for forgiveness for. The other way to break the cycle is to stop forgiving people multiple times. Well, hold up. You shouldn't stop forgiving people multiple times. You should forgive people as many times as they need forgiveness. That's what God does for us because we constantly need forgiveness and ask for forgiveness, those of us that believe in God. But you can learn to forgive people from a distance. And that goes back to if you're standing in the street, you probably should get out of the street to avoid the car that's coming towards you. You don't just keep putting yourself in the street to get run over, over and over again. You can still forgive, but sometimes you need to forgive outside of that relationship. And then once you take that step, then you can address whatever it is that's truly causing you to forgive multiple times, someone who's doing the same thing or doing multiple different things that leads you to believe that you two really won't be in sync because hoping against hope, that doesn't work. Um, Constantly nagging somebody, that doesn't work. Yeah, none of that stuff works. Either either it's going to work and they're gonna do better or they're not. Yeah, The, the funniest thing, and again, a lot of this applies to women. Again, sorry, ladies. I know it seems like I'm coming down on you all, but, um, and I understand that guys are starting to do more womanly type things, but as far as nagging goes, nah, I still think that's, I still think women um, have that one cornered. Now you can talk about a guy that you know that that's the nag or something like that, but still, if we put women and men together, I think women got that one. Women nag more than men. And I've seen way too many times where women will just, go in on a dude, go in on a dude, go in on a dude. And it's like, if you have to do all of that, it's really not worth it. So why do you put up with all of that? And you know me, people that listen to this podcast or have listened to this podcast for as long as I've been doing it, what, like almost two years now? People who've been listening to it, um, you know that I attribute a lot of things to loneliness and the fear of loneliness if you're not lonely. And the whole, it's good to have a piece of somebody than nobody, which I guess it all depends on who you are. Some people might feel that way. A lot of people feel that way. I don't know if it's true or not, but no, I guess it all depends on the person whether it's true or not. But the point is um, that cannot make you happy. And the fear of loneliness should not be a motivator for you to compromise on your principles. If somebody is apologizing to you all of the time, there is a problem there. And as much as I hate to say it, part of the problem is they don't really wanna change. And this applies to men and women because I've been in relationships where women have apologized to me mostly for their shitty attitudes. And they always say they'll do better. They'll do better. They'll do better for a week. And then next thing you know, they're jumping down my throat about something. And I'm just like, where in the world did this come from? Yeah. And in those times, you know, I've realized that, yeah, this probably isn't going to work for me because while the person anybody can change if they really want to change. Um, I question whether they really want to change. 
but I guess that's a personal decision. And if somebody, and if you do, and I'll close on this, if you do stay in these relationships and you forgive somebody 150, 11 times, when it's over, leave that there in that relationship. Don't carry that mess into the next relationship. I am so tired of meeting women and having to answer for the sins of boyfriends past. I've talked about it before and it just doesn't stop. I'm, I'm amazed in these conversations that I'm having with women where it's like, I have to, again, like I've said before in episodes, I have to prove that I'm not that guy that did that thing to them at that time that they forgave 20 times. But, but now it's tr now they're treating me as if I'm going to do it, whatever it is. And I'm just like, I just wanted to have a phone conversation, but you won't even give me your number because you think I'm going to stalk you. And this, that one, I talked about this several episodes ago about women refusing to give dudes their number. I just don't understand where that comes from, but I'm not going to go off on a tangent on that. If you want to hear more about that, go back through the archives and listen to old episodes and stuff like that. And you'll hear about the things that I'm bitching about. I wish I had the title, but I'm freestyling. So I, I am not prepared right now. I apologize for that. And I apologize for also not knowing the show's email address. Um, and hold on. I just, I just can't, I just have to figure out what the email address is. Um, um, I think it's, it is podcast, podcast, no S at the end. So just podcast singular at datingwhileadulting.com. So whew, that was bothering me. As you can see from the beginning to now, that mess was like stuck in my head. What is the show's email address? Podcast at datingwhileadulting.com. Email me directly or the show directly at michael at datingwhileadulting.com. And if you want to email Reggie at an email address that he'll never check, it's redenbush at datingwhileadulting.com. So those are the three emails. I love hearing from you all. Um, and that's that. And while I'm speaking about Reggie and the email address that he'll never check, Reggie, come say what's up to the people. Say goodbye to the people. Say something to the people. Reggie. Reggie says nothing. So. I'm sure that's not a shock to any of you, but um, yeah, people, therapy, men, therapy, people in general, therapy, loneliness. There are things to combat that. It is not the worst thing in the world and you should not have to put up with bullshit because of fear of loneliness. The problem with a lot of people in relationships is they stick in these relationships longer than they should. And while they're in these relationships being faithful for years, that's years that go by where they could be um, meeting their soulmate. They take themselves off the market for years when they could have been looking for and finding the person that they're supposed to be with. But because of loneliness, they just assume that if they get out of this shitty relationship, they'll just be alone forever. But that's enough of my lecture. I'm done here. Um, yeah. Then play my music. I'm, I'm done. Yeah. G goodbye.